Boys and girls, good evening. Here we are, holed up in Los Angeles, finishing off our fucking record. The new album, All Hell's Breaking Loose. Mark Gallagher, Mr. Michael Heller, War John. John Gallagher, thank you. We just want to give you a, kind of a, some information about our new record, All Hell is Breaking Loose. And uh, that's why I brought these two idiots with me. Yeah. We're the guys that are going to take your credit card numbers. Give you some of the background, some of the stuff that we uh, we come up with, right? No second chances, it's your time to fly. Race with the devil, he's calling your name. Yeah, so we, uh, a lot of these songs we've been working over the last two years. Some of them are, are, are pretty much been wrote or come up with the ideas for the song right before we start recording. Some have been around for about a year, year and a half. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. We just played a whole that, section that was, there. So that you was really... very fast before the guy wiped out. Right then. <laughs> we gotta build up to it. Right? There you go. I'm sure it went down. Yeah. Try it again. This is what happens during that. <laughs> That's the first solo. And I think the thing we were saying earlier is that, that when we, everybody, that cliche of like, oh, this is the best record we've ever done. We really feel that it is the best record we've ever done, even though that is like, it sounds like another cliche. <laughs> but um, you put some time in it. And, it, and most records, by the time you spend all the time recording and everything else, you go to the point when you go, oh, I don't want to hear that anymore. It's, you know, you've heard it like 5,000 times by the time it's all finished and mixed. But, um, this record's a little different from uh, even the last two records, which we could be kind of building. We kind of got into the whole thing where we said, you have to just do more work to come up with a new record. That was the secret, is just to work more and have more songs to choose from and be able to uh, make some kind of hard decisions about which songs need to be on that record and what, how it all fits together, so. Ready when you are. All right, it sounds like I'm doing the same thing twice, is that right? Yeah, you have a song that's going, ah, oh, this is good. It's just, well, good isn't good enough. Yeah. C could it be better? What if you change this? What if you take this out? What if you put something else in? Does it need that part there? Take that out. Put something else in or whatever elevates it. If there's any part in it that's like, well, that's like, okay. Or this, this little part that joins that to that is useless. Get rid of it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You know, like nothing sacred, uh, just make it better. So it's an awful lot of that. And doing the recording of this, since uh, we are the producers, we would bitch at each other to and push each other to to get more, to get better, try something else. That's you know that that's not right. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> This mm. part's freaking great. Don't change it. It's a big giant argument in the studio and people just screaming at each other. It's great. <laughs> Awful lot of violence. But, uh, but very, uh, very little racism. There's not much of that in it. It's all right. <laughs> Especially with, um, with the three of us, we've all done a lot of recording, so we're able to cut to the chase a little bit and, and get rid of some of the uh, 
the chaff and just keep the wheat, you know what I mean? Keep the, the good stuff and get rid of the, the dead wood, if you want. And uh, that's not Dave Wood being dead, who used to be our old uh, record boss. That's just wood, real wood, you know what I'm saying? So there. And of course, as you know, the heaviest wood that there is, there's iron wood and then there's Natalie wood. <laughs> <laughs> See, when we did the last record, which is Metal City, we had a lot of problems that recording Metal City. I won't go into all that right now. But at one point, we actually uh, flew Mike in because he was doing his drums in his own studio, and we wanted to work as a as a unit and uh, come up with some ideas. And uh, maybe Mike, you can expand on that on that part. Okay. So, <laughs> I uh, originally sang a riff into my phone, um, yep. which I, I have and I can play, um, uh, just making mouth noises going, right. I have this idea, it's gonna be, it's gonna be cool, it's like old style Raven, but new, ah. um, have this mystical, magical idea, and just, uh, <laughs> sat in an airplane bathroom, going, yeah. okay, and yeah. making riffs, and then, uh, when I landed and we got together, uh, played this for you guys, and you're like, okay, that's cool. What else you got? And I'm like, that's it. All right. And so we constructed a song out of it, essentially. And uh, you'd be actually surprised at how many songs have been Raven songs have been written on a plane, singing into the into your cell phone in a bathroom. <laughs> I don't know what it, why that's uh, relevant, but uh, there you go. Um, An inspiration from strange places. <laughs> Yeah, even um, I think one song that was like that was uh, "Destroy All Monsters" from uh, Arch uh, from uh, what's right? Extermination. Extermination. And I came up with that like just singing into my phone. That wasn't I didn't do that with a guitar or nothing. So maybe we should just get rid of our instruments and just carry phones <laughs> around. It'd be a lot cheaper. Yeah, let me interject that. Is uh, I've been listening to the record a lot lately and. Uh, because, you know, when you first finish the record, you're burnt by it. But now I'm listening a little bit more. And uh, I really, uh, I don't know why this is, but for some reason, the guitar solos have, like, all these, like, melodic parts in the guitar solos, which, I mean, I kind of do that anyway. But for some reason, on this record, without even uh, having a deliberate way of doing that, it just came out that every every guitar solo has these little iconic kind of, uh, like, a hoop, like, hook, you know? So I've really considered... Uh, but most times I don't play the solos on the records live. It gives me just a little bit of freedom and I can just kind of just jam, you know what I mean? I don't have to learn the parts. A lot of bands learn exactly what the guitar solo is and play it just like, you know, just like the record. But I try to change it up a little bit. I keep little bits and bobs. But I really feel this time I might do most of the solos. I'm not going to put... Uh, see, I'm going to do all of them, <laughs> but most of them I'm going to kind of uh, learn them and uh, re replicate them because I think that it fits with the song so good. So you know, that's just one thing I wanted to add. I bet you ten bucks he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, that's just an idea, but the actual reality is far from the truth. <laughs> 